1980, marvelous Marvin Hagler finally got his hands on the middleweight titles, defeating Alan Minter in London, England in convincing fashion over four rounds, causing a cut that would leave the ref no choice but to call an end to the fight. After 54 fights, Hagler had done it. Holding his arms aloft and dropping to his knees, he was now the undisputed middleweight champion. However, the moment was bittersweet as the angry crowd threw bottles and cans in the ring towards the new champ due to the early stoppage. Beer cans, one's landed on me. Beer cans are being hurled in all over the ring. There's a fight started over Hagler. Somebody is attacking him. And there is chaos here, absolute chaos. He was not allowed to enjoy his moment of glory and had to be escorted from the ring quickly. But this incident would very much fuel Hagler for his next challenge, defending his middleweight titles in Boston, something he'd always dreamed of doing. The opponent for this fight would be the relatively unknown Venezuelan Fulgencio Obelholmaez, or for short, Fulio Bell, a former Olympian and a pro who accumulated 28 KOs in his 30 professional fights, giving him the suitable moniker of the animal. At 6 foot 1 and a 75 inch reach, he also had deadly power in both hands, but it was his devastating left hook that was his big money punch. Going into this fight, the South American looked like he could spoil all of Hagler's hard work in only his first defense. But for Hagler, it was a different story. In fact, it was an insult that he was getting a shot. He said, how did he get to be number one? When I was working my way up the ratings, Obelhomeus wasn't behind me, but all of a sudden I get to be champ and here's a guy from nowhere right behind me? If that's the way it is, why even have ratings? The fact that WBC and WBA had done this to Hagler made him better, but fueled the fire of his alter ego persona of the monster. Marvin set off to his self-imposed prison at Provincetown on Cape Cod to prepare for the fight over the harsh cold winter. Despite the question marks over this opponent initially, Hagler was going into this very much treating his first title defense as if he was in fact a contender for his first title fight. I've watched other fighters win world titles, then lose the dedication that got them there. They start training in majestic locations and gradually go soft. Hagler embraced the toughness and loneliness as an essential part of his mental preparation and saw it as one way to anger the monster persona going into fights. He said, I remember everything they did to me. I'll never forgive them. I want to stay better. I use it. I feed on it. That's why I put myself in jail like this to train for a fight. I want to be mean. All I want to think of is destruction. Then nobody can take from me what's mine. That's the only way they'll get the title from me, is to kill me. On January 17th, the Boston Garden, with over 10,000 fans in attendance, nothing was going to stop the monster from trying to take out the ferocious Venezuelan animal in Fulio Bell. But let's analyze how he did this in his first title defense as a middleweight king. As with many championship fights, round one is typically a feeler round. This is the chance for a boxer to study their opponent, determine their timing, rhythm and range. Hagler came out in his usual southpaw stance, immediately looking to use a lot of feints while trying to find the range and timing with his right hand. Not to mention Hagler figuring out Obel's own timing with his lead hand. Marvin made sure to keep his head off the center line, slipping either side of the jab. However, Hagler for the most part was still at mid to close quarters and was able to set up the first noticeable blow of the fight with a left hook to the body and right hand up top. And keep a note of this combo for later on. Right now they're sizing each other and trying to get the geometry and quickness between them, see how far apart they have to stay to be effective. By the end of this round, they'll, they'll pretty well have each other sized up in terms of quickness and reach. And from this round alone, Hagler may have just figured out his man. With Hagler going back to his corner, his trainer, Goody Petronelli, ordered his man to continue the pressure and stay on top of him for the next three minutes. I feel the Hagler's waiting to see what Obel has to offer. And um, I'm quite sure as the rounds go by, you're going to see a different story in Marvin Hagler. We saw a much more aggressive Hagler in round two, 
upping up his use of feints and waiting to time the Venezuelan with heavier blows. However, Obel wasn't just going to let Hagler get a hold of the fight and instead looked to set up his own right hand and get in the outside position against the southpaw positioning of Hagler with timely looping uppercuts. And with Hagler in range, the animal was clearly trying to set up his right hand left hook combinations and vice versa, with the left hook skimming past him by inches at times. However, Obel was playing right into the hands of Marvelous. that Fulio Bell really realizes that. A left hand of the jaw of Fulio Bell forces him back to the ropes. And that brings the crowd here at Boston Garden to its feet. Best punch of the fight that time. Going into the third round, it couldn't have started any better for Hagler as he landed his best shot of the night so far with a right hook and left hand combo, stumbling back the Venezuelan to the ropes. While Hagler intelligently slapped away the lead right hand while jumping into the outside position to land the left, but they did tangle feet. Nevertheless, a punch that made him a lot more hesitant to commit after this, and a combination Hagler would continuously look to set up after this. Hagler instead looked to circle to his right, firing his jab, before standing his ground and fainting, waiting for Obel to come forward again, usually waiting to counter with the right hook with a hard left hand straight, or slipping to the outside to throw a left hand. The Venezuelan still packed a huge punch though, and was still utilizing the jab very well, countering Marvin with the right hand occasionally. Hagler was no doubt very aware of this, and his aim was to take him to deep waters. And we come to the end of the third round. I think one observation that you might have to have here is just the fact that you talk about the fact is Fulgencio Mahias a qualified challenger, and so far, at least through the first three rounds, you have to say he's really been qualified to be in a ring at least. Yeah, all the Going into round 4, Obel clearly felt at this point he could take Hagler's best punch and would start to stand his ground just a little more, jabbing and trying to win that lead hand battle in the orthodox southpaw matchup, still trying to set up that dangerous left hook right hand combination and vice versa. But if anything, this was to Marvin's benefit as he knew exactly the type of punch he was looking to land and the closer the animal was trying to get to him, it gave opportunities to counter his more one dimensional attacks. And just like a hunter, patience is often the key to a successful hunt. Hagler was able to get on the inside and draw out Obel's right hook and counter him with his own right hand, which indeed would create Hagler's first onslaught of the fight. Obel for just a moment, and another combination has Obel a little bit wobbly right now. Obel up against the ropes here, as we are just over halfway through the fourth round. Another good right hand on the cheek of Fully Obel, and a left hand under the cheek. Now the inside fighting from Marvin here is truly marvellous when we look at the finer details. During his attacks, he would look to mainly keep his head on the left shoulder of Obel, protecting himself from Obel's right hand, while his awareness of what punches would be thrown at him is just amazing as he would be ready to bob and weave after throwing his own hooks or uppercuts on the inside, and if Obel tried to get away, so he could continue his attack, looking to even shoulder roll and counter fully Obel's right hand. In the next round, Hagler was clearly smelling blood, feeling he could take him out once and for all. Hagler always continued to use his feints and use of level changes to keep the Venezuelan guessing, and just like what he did at the start of the third round, used a beautiful right hook left hand up top, while he would also look to throw this off the jab. At this point, Hagler was indeed on the hunt, looking to walk down a tired and hurt but stubborn animal fighting for its life. I love how Hagler would use the crab style guard walking down Obel, similar to the likes of Joe Frazier. From here, he would use this to block incoming uppercuts from Obel as he was coming into range before he would immediately look to go to the body. This itself would make Obel look to block the body punches by lowering his arms that were taking their toll, once again creating opportunities for Hagler to throw his hooks up top around the guard, while then going back to throwing sharp uppercuts down the middle. At this point, Obel didn't know where the punches were coming from, whether it was to the body or head, a hook or an uppercut, a jab or a straight. Somehow, he managed to survive the round. But he is a tired, he is a beat fighter. Five seconds to go here in round five, and he will get through this one.
Hagler started the sixth as he was to go on, continuing his barrage of punches before catching Obel with a terrific left hook, putting him down for the first time in the fight. Good for the jaw of Fully Obel, and Obel remains on his feet. Another right overhand and another uppercut, and Obel backs away again, her and a left hand, and Obel is down. Somehow, Fully Obel got up and continued the fight. Yet at this point of the fight, you can't help but think Hagler had maybe punched himself out, with the sting of his punches slowly starting to fade after this. So many shots, so many punches. I think at this point now, Hagler's a little arm weary, and Obel's just holding his own, but he's taking a tremendous amount of punishment. Hagler's throwing those punches all the way from Provincetown, and it's a good thing he spent all that time there to get himself in this shape. Somehow, Obel was still looking to land a big right hand or left hook on Marvin, looking to turn the tide of the fight with anything. In round 7, Obel somehow got a second wind, and with Hagler still landing practically most of his punches at this point, you start to wonder how he can possibly take him out. He even landed a few big right hands of his own again, and he just got the feeling even watching all these years later. Hagler was thinking, what is this guy made of? And can I even finish off this fight? He's truly a determined fighter. He's had something in that left hand too, and it just missed Braves Marvin Hagler's nose that time. Look at this, he's coming on. Obel has Hagler against the ropes now. And now Hagler gets out of there and figures enough of this nonsense, sticks a right hand, and then a left to Obel's face. Bell comes back with a combination, misses though. And three, four quick punches and a right hand to the top of the head. Staggers Bell at the end of the ropes. Octavio Manon says, that's all, that's enough. Marvin Hagler is still the champion of the world. But after four rounds of Hagler's non-stop onslaught, he finally got his man by closing the distance initially, throwing two hard left hands to the body as Obel moved to his right before using the jab as an entry to get on the inside. Obel would throw his last combination of the fight to the body and a left hook which Hagler was able to roll. Hagler, now on the inside, subtly turned to an orthodox stance to help generate more power with his right hand for throwing a seven punch sequence. A right uppercut, left hook, right uppercut, left hook, right hook, leaving the Venezuelan stumbling towards the ropes, giving the ref no choice but to wave it off. Finally, Hagler had got his man and his first defense of his middleweight titles in Boston. You could argue that this was a tentative first defense for Hagler, but if anything, I think it was a tremendous performance against a bigger man with deadly knockout power. He couldn't just rush the early rounds, as this was exactly probably what Obel wanted him to do. Instead, his use of the jab and fainting helped him set up the counterpunch openings to the body and up top to hurt Fully Obel. Hagler's variation when fighting on the inside also played a huge factor in breaking him down over the four rounds. But here's what Hagler had to say. Tougher than you thought. He was. He was a lot tougher than I thought. I had to weigh him down. I realized I was in good shape. And I know he trained real hard for this fight. But I told him, he's never met anybody like Marvin Hagler. In order for me to go, he's going to have to hit me with that ring post. I'm showing the world that I should have been champion a long time ago. Did and he, I feel very good. I got the best trainer and manager did he ever, in the world. Did he ever hurt you? No, I was never hurt. I just had to get things together. Don't go with too much power. Stay loose. And I figure I would get him with speed. Early on, you seemed to be measuring him for two or three rounds. You had a little bit of a problem reaching him because he was so tall. So tall, working my way in. Didn't want to run into anything on the way in. After the fight, the Venezuelan claimed he'd broke his thumb in the second round and he couldn't breathe well due to the cold air he wasn't used to. Hagler declared he'd have to wait for his shot again. He did give Fully Obel another chance a few years later in Italy's warmer climate, this time giving him no excuses for their rematch, and in fact, finished it even quicker. Overall, I think this was a very tough first defense for Marvin Hagler, as Obel has to be one of the toughest and biggest opponents he faced throughout his career. A very underrated fighter that doesn't get talked enough in my opinion. But I think this is a great fight to look back on to see some of Hagler's best work with his feints, jab and inside fighting. And I recommend you go back and study this fight. Let me know in the comments what you made of this fight. Is there another fight in history you would like me to analyse? This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.